Whoa. Whoa. Do you want to wear glasses? Yes. Hello. I hope you can hear me okay. I might set up the mic different. Give me a second. It shouldn't do that. So I'm not gonna cl so I'm not gonna talk about my life because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with it. I cannot believe I gave advice when I was 20 years old. I was a mess. I still am a mess. Please don't listen to anything I say. I am terrified of the internet. It is literally killing people. I'm going to try my best to dip back in now and again in the teeniest, safest, softest ways that I can. So here are some of my thoughts. Some of my thoughts. I don't know if you know this, but I've spoken about being in pain, bodily pain, on my channel a few times before on the internet. Usually, I basically have this one terrible, 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 terrible night where I get pain around here. Just under my ribs and all the way around my back. And believe me when I say it is unbearable. Like rolling around on the floor, wailing, unbearable. I kept going to the doctor and they would give me various pills. I once got a whole jug of laxatives that did not help. It was so gross. I've been on various like prozoles. Gavascon did not help. Paracetamol did not help. Ibuprofen did not help. The nights usually go as follows. It's 7 p.m. I've eaten a meal and the pain comes on and I'm like, oh no, hopefully it'll be fine. It's 10 p.m. The pain is pretty bad. I take a bath. It's kind of dulled. Take some painkillers and I try to go to sleep. It is 1 a.m. I've been rolling around in my bed crying. Might take another bath. It is 2 a.m. and I finally call 111 and say, please, please help me. They ask me a question that says, is the pain in your chest? I'm always like, yeah, but also kind of not. But they're like, you need to tell us if it is, because if it is, we're getting you an ambulance. A few times before I've been like, no, it's fine, never mind. The next time I took an Uber to the A&E, and then more recently, I was like, you know what, fuck it. Yeah, send me an ambulance, because I am screaming. So they did, I was put on gas and air. Very strange. <laughs> not anything I'm ever gonna put online. Oh my God. And I arrive, and I wait four hours, as you do at A&E. The birds are chirping. My pain is dulled and numbed to the point where it's kind of gone. I see a doctor. They say, what the fuck is wrong? I say, it's gone now. <laughs> and they say, we can't help you. This is A&E, accident and emergency. Book an appointment with your GP. And I say, okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Then I go home feeling like a crazy lady. But more recently, I've persevered. I got a scan. I've had a few scans in the past, but finally they found a lump on my gallbladder. A lump. I saw it with my own eyes. One CM long. I saw it. It has a name. I can't say it. Adenomyomatosis. 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 No. I have an appointment with a specialist soon to see if I want it taken out. That's right, an organ. And I've looked up keyhole surgery. I don't know why I did. I shouldn't have. They blow up your damn tummy like a balloon. Oh my god, the the like little 3D animation is just horrendous. They just stick prongs in you and go until your body is like. <clears throat> It's like, where, where does that air go? Does it go? What if there's still some in there? Wh what hole does it come out of? You don't fart it out because that's like a different place. You don't have any holes. Surely your body's like airtight. So where's it gonna go? What if I just have air in me? <laughs> I just can't. I've, t I've spoken about being put to sleep before on this channel because I don't want to be turned off. It freaks me out so much. I've asked my friends if they would come with me. And they were like, yeah, of course. And I was like, I don't think you understand. You're going to see me in my primal, animalistic state of fear. I'm going to be yelling, screaming, anything I damn can. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Everything in me is just going to say, don't turn me off. I don't want to die. The next time I wake up, I'll be in pain. And not only will I be in a lot of pain, I'll be in pain because I'm missing an organ. I'm missing an organ. You, d you shouldn't mess with this stuff. It all works in its own way. Don't take something out. You can't do that. You shouldn't mess with that stuff. <laughs> I've done a lot of research on the digestive system. Basically, I'll explain this as quickly as possible because it's not what you signed up for. The liver creates bile. The bile is stored in the gallbladder like a little squeezy pump that is concentrated and it squeezes bile out to the small intestine to break up the fats for you to use that food to your body. When you don't have a gallbladder, the bile just trickles down from the liver into the small intestine. Um, so a lot of people, after having their gallbladder removed, will have problems digesting fats maybe get diarrhea, maybe put on weight. Don't love the idea of changing my diet. I'm not very good at food control. Don't really want an element of that in my life. Oh, I just don't know if it's worth it. Like, what if I get more pain? Like, currently, my pain comes every six months or so, and it is terrible. I have no doubts that the next time I'm in pain, I'm gonna be like, cut me open right now, blow me up like a balloon. But right now, I'm all right. 
I'm not in pain. What if I'm in constant pain afterwards? It's just a weird decision. I don't like it. I don't like getting old. I don't like all these body things. Blah, blah, blah. Wah, 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 dirty. Anyway, so that's what I've been thinking of. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments. People tell me to get it. People tell me to not. I don't know. Okay, another thought I've been having recently. Can you imagine an apple in your mind? can't believe I'm talking about this. Surely it's been talked about to death. This one didn't phase me so much because, I don't know, like, I feel like, I don't want to say I'm the norm. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm pretty bog standard. I can, I can definitely see an apple in my mind. If I close my eyes and imagine it, it's red. It just looks like a, a video. It looks like a, a memory. How does your brain know what is real and what isn't? I mean, mine doesn't. <laughs> anyway, so that was very interesting, but then it kind of moved into what are your thoughts like in your head? And fun fact, I had a contract to write a second book and then I was like, just kidding, I'm, I'm just gonna do music now. I was gonna write short stories about superpowers and one of them, I thought it was pretty good. Maybe I will write it, I don't know. Basically the idea was this girl at a traumatic event in her life, her brain kind of splits as a way to cope and develops mind reading and my kind of like special twist was like oh well she doesn't hear people's thoughts because you can't actually hear people's thoughts because they're never ever one coherent sentence they're always like a mess of feelings and images and like abstract pictures maybe like the odd word but like you can never really pinpoint exactly what it is when reading twilight which i still would argue is an amazing series of books. I love the Twilight books. I think the writing's amazing. I think the concept is perfect. What a perfect fantasy? Okay, all right. Edward Cullen could read thoughts and I'm sure in like every other book that you've read where someone can read thoughts, it's like in italics, like one perfect sentence. And I was always like, well, that's just artistic license because no one ever really thinks like that. But apparently you do, apparently you do. Apparently some people have just a running monologue of like words. I can't I can't express how insane that is. Surely it's so easy to talk for you. There's no other step of like translating your feelings into words because your mind just does it for you? I'm so like jealous of that. Like if you have a running monologue, you could probably write down everything it's saying. I mean, I could do that anyway. But like, it's, it's kind of like, I don't really know. But you could like analyze your words like in your head and find out so much about yourself. Whereas mine is like, there's a song playing, so those are the words I can usually hear in my head. It's, or, it's only lyrics or like a memory of something, or maybe like an imaginary conversation I would have with someone where I play it out in my head, but it's never like me being like, wow, I would really like a glass of oat milk. <laughs> if I wanted a drink, I wouldn't think, wow, I'm thirsty. You know what I need? <laughs> it would just be like, <laughs> it'd be like, oh God. This is really hard. You can't, this is the thing. I feel like I can't describe to you what my thoughts are because they are literally just like a song playing in one corner of my fucking subconscious. A worry, deep buried within, that I don't really know what it is. A memory, slash an imaginary memory of the future or the past. I feel like it's, yeah, I don't know. It's just so strange to me. All right, moving on. Another thing I've been thinking of is my response to my dear 25 year old me video is coming up because it's my birthday in April. I'm gonna be 25 years old. It will have been half a decade since I made that video. Oh my. Yeah, I keep getting a bit emotional when I think about it. I have not watched it since. I remember asking if my cat had died. My cat has died. <laughs> I'll probably talk about it in the video. Another thing, I want a cat so bad and I keep getting alerts from shelters for new cats that have come in, but they all require a garden. And every time I call up and I say, hello, I don't have a garden. Please can I have a cat? And they go, no, no. And then I look at the picture of the cat and I cry. I already imagined our life together. Yeah, so I gotta stop doing that. Um, my brain is telling me that the internet is gonna say, well, you need a garden for a cat. Blah, blah, blah. I also am very aware plants are poisonous to cats. I'm also very aware that they're on a radiator. My radiator is broken. I just hear the internet being like, <laughs> anyway, carry on. Another thing I've been thinking of is I am like itching for big change, which is wild. Quite recently actually I was faced with a big change that was happening and it almost stopped. Something almost went, you know what, you could not just move forward, you could actually keep everything as it is. And I realised I didn't want it. I was like, oh, I think I've adapted to the idea of change now. I think I need it. It makes me feel so much better when I think about like my family and my home life and how in my worst moments I'm like oh my gosh I would do anything to go back I would do anything to keep it all the same and maybe I don't really feel that maybe if at that moment everything split and exploded maybe I would have said you know what 
do it. Because I needed it. Dodie, do you actually believe that? I don't know. I think that's enough rambling. I can't believe I'm making a video. New music is coming. You know that. I'm just going to be happy with whoever is curious enough to listen to it. It is really good. I wrote score for a 13-piece string section, and it is the music I've always wanted to make in my entire life, and I want to send it out to anyone I admire and hope that they will hire me to write their film scores. Okay, my heart hurts because I thought about change. You know why? Because my thoughts are all like this. And this is the big worry. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.